Welcome to Tech Breakfast, everyone. Yeah. Hi. <clears throat> Go ahead. Take it it's away. Not breakfast Derek. time for me. I'm uh, I'm in the UK, so it's like 6 p.m. here. I yeah. had breakfast long ago. Did that ago. pass your bedtime? <laughs> not quite, but almost. My bedtime's 6.30. Yeah, really? <laughs> no. <laughs> Everybody, is Freddie from uh, Nugent Audio, and he has a cool thing. I put the links in the chat window for you guys. And so uh, take it away. If we can, take it away, Freddie. Sure, yeah. Um, am I okay to share my screen? Yep. Looks like Go a ahead. permission. Good stuff. Okay, so yeah, the um, for anyone who doesn't know me, uh, I'm from New Gen Audio. Uh, we're a plugin developer based in the UK, and the latest plugin that um, we've released about three weeks ago that I'm going to talk about today is a plugin called Jotter. Um, Jotter is a utility plugin uh, designed for collaboration, um, giving like mixed feedback. Um, you know, uh, reviewing mixes, all that kind of thing. And it's designed with collaboration in mind. Um, so there's two versions of Jotter. There is the plugin insert, which is a paid for product. I, off the top of my head, I think it's $49. Um, but there is also a free version, which runs as a standalone application. So the idea is that um, as an audio engineer, you would have the paid version of Jotter um, which you can use as an insert in Pro Tools or Logic or Cubase or whatever DAW you might be using. It, it runs in AAX, AU and VST3. Um, and you would encourage, is the word I'm using, encourage your clients to um, download the free version of Jotter. And the idea is that this is a streamlined way of getting mix notes and mix feedback from a client. So I've got the standalone version of Jotter open here. Um, in the standalone version, you can import um, a WAV file, and then you've got the waveform of the entire thing here, and you can add timestamped notes at specific points on the timeline. You're then able to export those as a CSV file, so it takes up very little space, um, and those can be imported into a DAW session with the timestamps included. So say, for example, I'm a mix engineer who sent um, a mix to a band that I'm working with to get their mix notes. They can all open the free version of Jotter, add their feedback at specific points on the timeline, um, and then send it to you. You can import that into Pro Tools. So I've got, um, hang on, tell you what, I've, I've just realized I've, I've got these the wrong way around. I've put, <laughs> I've put my notes into the plugin insert version, not the standalone version, but you get the idea. There's a standalone version here. You can Freddie, export Freddie, notes. Freddie, could you, is it possible to make that Jotter screen just bigger in total? Yes, I'll do it for you, Barry. Well, um, <laughs> no I have else. a plug in, I, but, but just to really see it because it, 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 here you go. Now you're yakking. Okay. Here we go. Um, there should be a font size control somewhere here as well, but I, it's possible that I might have hidden that by mistake. But anyway, basically there is, um, yeah, the plugin version. So you get your mix feedback from whoever you've sent it to, whether that's band you're working with, an artist you're working with, a producer, um, whoever it might be, and you can import that into the session. You've got the timestamps here, and then you can use Jotter as like a dynamic to-do list. So you're able to tick off what's been done. You can hide what's already been ticked off or hide what is still to be done if you wanna see kind of what you have already done. Um, you can add in your own comments as well and then export it and send it back to the client so it can be a dialogue back and forth the idea is that it works in a similar way to for example if you're working in like google docs and you have like the track changes with people's comments and suggestions on the right hand side at the moment you can't um thread comments on here but we're looking at adding that in so that you'll be able to reply to specific notes. Um, we're also adding in, uh, or we're looking into adding video integration in the standalone version for, um, you know, audio post. Um, so that, yeah, you can, you can review that in line with the picture as well as just the audio. Um, it's the first plugin that we've added in uh, font size control. So that's seems like a really basic thing, but it's not something we've added in before. So it's kind of a, new to us. Um, 
it's also the first time we've added in accessibility features for visually impaired people. So this is the first plugin we've made that has screen reader support. And we've also added in a bunch of keyboard shortcuts, um, which were developed alongside a guy called, I think his name's Jay Descent, who's a, an audio engineer who is blind. And we've kind of worked with him specifically putting together keyboard shortcuts that are useful for visual. So, so the, the notes, they speak to you like a... Like uh, if you if you're of... using a, a screen reader, that's right. So that that's not kind of default in the plugin, but it, it's compatible with with screen readers. Okay, so screen reader is a separate program. Uh, so a screen reader is just something that um, visual, people with visual impairments use for browsing like various websites and using other bits of software and things like got that. Got it. Got so, it. So if it's so the people who would be using the screen reader. Um, a, people who, who will presumably already have a screen reader either as software or hardware that they use um, alongside other programs this is just so the screen reader isn't something that we've made it's just that jota has compatibility with that and it's the first time that we've we've added that compatibility into into a plugin and that's something we're going to be rolling out into other new gen plugins um over the coming months as well so if if people have other other uh, new gen tools that they use, and that's something we'll be adding into those as well. Awesome. So walk us through the process. So you have a track right now up there and you've got uh, notes kind of like in Pro Tools, it would be like your, we you call it memory locations or something uh, where you could go straight to them. And where are the, where is that CSV? Where is that information stored in the plugin or somewhere else? So that is stored either in the plugin or if you're in the standalone version, it, it's stored in there, but you are then able to import and export it. So it is still saved with the session itself. So if you open your Pro Tools session, it's not like you need to import the uh, the CSV again. It's saved within the session, but you are also able to, to export that. Because it's CSV, it means that if you have someone who's completely technophobic on the uh, on the team who still needs access to those notes and timestamps they are able to open that in like microsoft excel or google sheets or whatever it might be so the idea is that even if people don't own jota this is still something that can be integrated and, and you're still able to have that collaboration it means that unlike so for example i know avid have now added the feature that you can export um markers on the pro tools timeline um and you can export that within Pro Tools and within Media Composer so you can share that with different people. But obviously that's all still within the Avid ecosystem. Whereas with this, you have the same functionality, but you're able to share it not only within Pro Tools and Media Composer, but also with other doors and also people who don't use a door whatsoever. Um, so yeah, for the with the standalone application, you don't need any other audio software. You can just add add the notes onto that and that can still be shared with Pro Tools users or whoever else. So uh, walk us through the process of dropping these markers or jotters. <laughs> sure. So um, and, uh, playing... also, also one thing, the, uh, the CSV file can be read in, in just about any program um, other. And it also, the C so the CSV file has both the time code and the node itself in in, uh, that's it yeah. exactly so the the time codes are embedded within that csv file as well all as right. all the notes so you it's uh, the the example i've been giving is i had a mix i was working on last year where when it got to the point of mix notes it turned out that the drummer thought the chorus was in a different place to everyone else and he had a bit of feedback about the drum mix and I none of us knew what he was talking about <laughs> because <laughs> uh, what he was saying didn't have any relevance to the chorus so you wouldn't have that problem here because you have the timestamps already included in there so there's no there's no ambiguity about which section of a track is being talked about but in terms of adding those in so as your uh let me find my transport window here we go as you're playing the audio through it um registers so so the waveform that you're seeing in jota that is literally just what has already been played into the plugin. So it's similar to a lot of people might already be familiar with the loudness meter that we make, VizLM. Um, that has like a history function that stores um, all the audio that's already been played in and that's linked to the time code. It's the same thing here. So as you're playing through, you can add um, a note at any point. So I just I had a I had a question. A lot of times uh, 
you're working on a mix and and you you want to people get notes on specific track in the mix this is mm -hmm. this would be for looking at a whole mix so you know more vocal less vocal more bass whatever for the whole mix if i mm -hmm. was sending something to a keyboard player to have him check something or other can you how do you how do you localize the notes to that track can that be done at all or uh, yeah, absolutely. So at the moment, this instance of Jota that I'm using is on the master track, but you could absolutely insert it anywhere in the session. So you could have, if you wanted to, you could have a different instance of Jota for every member of a band. You know, if you were getting mixed notes from every musician, potentially, then um, you could ha literally have on here, I could just have an instance of Jota on the keys track with, with that musician's specific notes in there. Um, and yeah, you could import that as its own thing. It it can be placed anywhere that any other plugin can be placed within a session. So you can, um, yeah, utilize that in as many different ways as you want and have as many different instances within a session as you want. Okay. Um, so take us through the process. You've, I've done a mix, uh, I'm giving that to the clients. They've downloaded the free, the free jotter standalone, which that, mm -hmm that boots up in your browser. Is that right? It's all you need. Is so at the moment, it's um, a standalone application that you that they would need to download. We're looking at the possibility of making a browser version so that they don't have to download anything. Because obviously, that's still a little bit of a, a point of friction potentially with clients that they that it's like rather than just sending them the web for them to listen to you're you're asking them to download this piece of software as well so we are looking at adding in a version that can run in the browser but that's something that we haven't done before we like obviously up until now everything that we make is either a plugin or a standalone application so having something that runs in a browser we're just kind of thinking about the logistics of that in terms of server space and things like that but that is something we're considering um but right now you would send the um the bounce to your client or colleague or collaborator or whoever, whoever it is, you would ask them to download the free version of Jota. They've then got so so you can you can play a web file from within Jota itself, and in the same way they can add notes with a timestamp and type whatever it is. I'm just typing nonsense here. And what the it, idea? And what is the fidelity of this of this uh, free playback unit? playback software what is the fidelity is it whatever you send it 48k 96 whatever you are doing is that the fidelity that you're hearing you know interestingly by this is you're the first person who's asked me that uh, within <laughs> within the month that uh, That's why he's since we released you yeah exactly um i i'm 99 sure that it is just it plays out at the fidelity of whatever the that's why I was interested in because this could be my new my new uh, uh, sending the mix rather than an MP3 or some other bullshit. I could send this if this is full fidelity as far as just you know the the mix, so they hear it the way it really is, not some compressed version. And True. So I mean, you would still have to send them the audio file as well. So oh. it, it it would be so when you know when the so the notes are embedded within Jota. And are embedded with you know with a with a timestamp but they would still need to have the audio files it's not something that's being being streamed to them i think if we do if we do create like the browser version then that would probably involve some kind of streaming as well and then obviously there's a separate um discussion to be had about like the fidelity of that and and how that's going to work but as it is this is jotter is essentially um it's essentially a media player which you're able to add. So that the standalone version at least is essentially a media player where you're able to add notes at specific points with specific timestamps. Um, but yeah, they would still need to have the audio file in order to, in order to add those, those notes. Nice. Very nice. Um, so you have the wave file or whatever they're using and you have this and, and does it, what do you do? You boot up this, and then it just finds the wave file. How does that work? And can you have so, multiple, you have multiple songs? In other words, several several songs. Let's say a whole album of songs that they could look at all the notes or add notes or whatever. This, I mean, this is kind of kind of a. I mean, you could take it either way. It could be a nightmare <laughs> for some. Yeah. So 
I think we we considered adding the ability to have within the standalone application to have multiple tracks so that you could you could do mix notes for a whole album. But the problem then with that is that then when you export the notes, it's kind of like, well, how do you differentiate um, which is for which track? And then when you export it back in to the Pro Tools session or the Logic session or whatever it is, you aren't necessarily going to be, you know, I know some people would mix an entire album all in one, in one um, Pro Tools session. Some people wouldn't say so kind of, it felt like that caused that created more questions than it created answers. So you would, you can only have one audio file at once active in the standalone version of Jota, but it is just a, a simple file browser. So you, you'd hit load audio you file. Certainly, you could certainly, if you had the whole album mixed, here. if you're looking for mix approval on a whole album, if you had the whole album mixed, you could certainly put all 10 songs in one giant uh, wave file, as long as you, you know, you syncing the time code. Uh, maybe we used to do a different hour for the start of each song. So hour, hour one with song one, so forth, hour two. And if yep. you do that in your, in your session, then conceivably you could, you could export the entire, I mean, it'd take a while, but you could export the entire album in WAV file and pull it up in this player and make notes all the way through it. Absolutely. And that, yeah, that would definitely be a way of doing it. You've just reminded me as well, talking about like a time code offset. Um, we have added in time code offset into Jota. So for example, if you've got like in your session, you've got a minute of daylight or whatever at the start, generally speaking, you wouldn't include that in the bounce. Um, but obviously that means that when someone is exporting all their notes with time codes from the standalone version of Jota, and they've been working with just that bounce when you import it back in to pro tools or whatever it might be you don't necessarily know whether it's going to line up so we've added in that um the functionality for the time code offset so yeah. if you know for example that there was a minute of silence at the start you've cut off then you just add that in as the time code offset so it allows you to easily sync things back up awesome okay so uh, let's just say we're working with one song and uh, you've sent the client the song, no notes yet. They, yep. they boot it up in this player and they start making notes. Now, how walk us through how you get his notes. You know, he's, what, does he send the file? What does he send back? The CSV file, right? Back to That's you. That's right. If you're the mixer, yeah. So you'd, so they would, so from the standalone version of Jota, they would export the file to whatever destination they you know, that's, I guess that's not really relevant, but yeah, they, they would, they would export the file, save it wherever, send it to you either on Dropbox or whatever it might be. And then when you're in Pro Tools, you then import. And again, it just opens as so a file browser you, and you can find it wherever. The, they send you the audio back as well? They don't need to send you the audio back because it, the timestamps are already in there. So it's as long as both people have access to the same audio, it doesn't need to be passed back and forth every time. Right. You're literally just passing back and forth the CSV file, um, awesome. which can then be Im imported and exported as many times as as needed. And it'll, it'll add things in. And it, as well, if you, we talked about having feedback from multiple people. And yes, you can have that as different instances of Jota if you want to keep those separately. But also if you import, um, several CFE files, when you import those, you have an option here to either replace current notes or add to current notes. So if you're getting loads and loads of different feedback, you can add them all in as, as one thing. So, so you aren't, when you import a new set of notes, you don't necessarily have to lose what was already there. You can add them in and you can, I think we're going to add in more color options, but as it stands, we've got, um, you're able to, set a palette of three colors as well so you can color code the notes you're looking at that's, that's not that so you can append you can append the the notes add to or append delete certain notes ones that exactly. are already taken care of for example say the first pass of notes you've you know he signed off on eight of them but 10 of them i'm being crazy 10 of them they're want to change something else oh that was too yeah. much of the vocal right you know whatever it is 
They can append what they've already said, delete, and so forth. Complete freedom there. Yeah, so I mean, so if I've already, t out of the six that I've got here, if I've already ticked off four of those, I can then just hide what's been ticked. Um, but I can also bring it back. So, you know, you, yeah, if you had that situation where you had 18 notes that needed actioning and you've actioned eight of them, then you can just hide what's already been awesome. been actioned. Okay. Uh, anybody that has any questions, please jump in here and help me out. I'm yeah. just... I'm just sorry to be the, the inquisitor here. The, no, of... not at all. It's, it's much appreciated. It's one of those plugins that it's kind of, it's, it's so simple and straightforward that it's difficult to have a really long conversation about it. Cause it's kind of like, well, it does, it does what it does. And hopefully it, you know, it streamlines people's workflow. Um, but it's, it's not a particularly sexy plugin. So it's kind of hard to like, it's not, it's not so much got the, the wow factor that yeah, hopefully it's gonna, you know, speed up people's workflow, make that kind of communication a lot easier, um, avoid those kind of misunderstandings like I was talking about with the drummer who didn't know where the chorus was, all, all that kind of thing. It's, um, but yeah, sorry, I'll, I'll open the floor to any, any other questions. We've got a lot, most, most people, most engineers here use Pro Tools, at least maybe mostly. So it's a $49 plugin, correct? That's right, yes. And the person on the other side doesn't have to have a plugin. They just can send you back their notes, correct? That's it, exactly. And the the plugin and the standalone version are included in the same installer as well. So there's no confusion about whether you, whether or not you're downloading the right thing there. It's, it's one download. But that in, so if you if you download it but you don't have a license for the plugin, then you're just able to run the standalone piece of software, um, and so you're not going to kind of get any uh, anything flagging up um, saying that you don't own it. It's kind of the standalone is free. That's there's not a time limit on that. It just is free, and so even for example, you could just get you could save that installer on your machine, and when you send um bounces to a client then you can just you could even just include that installer file in the email as well as um as well as the you know the the uh, wav file that you bounced cool very cool hey, can you have a quick question can you hear me first of all oh, yes go for it lou all right a quick question for you with regards to the notes column how many characters will fit in there just in case they want it to be appended by other engineers or other people work? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I actually, to my knowledge, there isn't a limit for the number of characters. Um, we could test that right now, I suppose. Um, but I, yeah, I don't. Let's, this is where I work in post mostly, but we, I use Frame.io and um, yeah, you know, I also use Eddie Load and Eddie Marker. Um, so, oh, it does. Okay, it does. It, I was wondering if it was going to do a carriage return and continue. That's great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm just yeah. holding down this key here. So I know this is a bit you know, of a silly with, example. Yeah, you know, when you need to get approval on something, you really don't want to give them too many characters. You either say it's approved or not. <laughs> you know, if you give them too much space, they write too many stories. Um, oh, that's yeah. interesting. So, if anything, would it be helpful for you to be able to set a character limit? In my space, yeah, <laughs> to be able to manage, so, even in their space, even mm -hmm. even in, uh, example being a lot of the, you know, because we do, I do voice, so I'm sorry, I do uh, dialogue editing and, mix, and mixing or something. And well, they would, they would just make another here. note and add to it. Yeah, yeah, that, that'll be more realistic, but, um, you know, because what's important, what I'm looking at is saying, well, I guess the question is, how many characters can I hold? Then the next question I have, is there a capability of having, I guess those orange boxes are a completed task. And is there mm -hmm. a, a, a opportunity to add like an approval, you know, because you'll make a, you'll make a, you know, somebody will identify a, a correction, if you will. And then as you go into it as the engineer on this side, I would be like, okay, I did it, complete it, it's off my box. Now John needs to approve it or Mary needs to approve it. Some kind of check mark yeah. system that everybody who right. has been saying. Yeah. Yeah, so you kind of know where in the timeline things are going if you're, you know, kind of at that level. So, and then, the, and then it comes back to the other question, third question I have, which is, 
Um, I'm not sure how many engineers on here use the um, Oh gosh, now I, I do a blank on what it's actually called, but you know the Pro Tools collaboration online, where you're able to, you know, like Tony can make an edit on, a, you know, Tony can do like a, you know, EQing for me on vocals, and then I'll see that change occur. Is that something that can that when you use collaboration of the Pro Tools online function, um, are those notes, let's say that Tony does have the app or Barry has the app and I made these notes on there, are they going to be able to see it with the plugin when it transfers over? Because it is technically, is it going to be part of that session file, I guess is what I'm asking. Yes, so the, the notes will all be um, included in the session file as well. Um, so it's, it, they are saved within the plugin anyway. Um, it's just that you're able to export that as a CSV as well. Um, regarding th this idea of kind of, um, a, first of all, being able to set a character limit and also being able to have kind of multiple tick boxes for approval. I think those are both. So at the moment we can't do either of those things, but there's no reason why we, those aren't things we could add in. Um, like I've said, this is a brand new tool. In fact, it, strangely enough, it was actually built essentially as a training exercise for one of our new programmers. Um, it wasn't initially intended to be released as a commercial plugin. And then once he built it, we were kind of like, oh, this is actually way more useful than we, than we realized it would be. So we're now kind of, uh, oh, I, that I, uh, it's it's not my decision, but to my knowledge, I, I think he has had one. So that's, it's, that's, that's, it's that's, really a good plugin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that we're, we're still kind of figuring out um, the kind of parameters of things, but definitely Lou, I think that idea of the kind of client facing side of things, being able to set a character limit just so that they don't talk loads of bullshit, uh, I think, I think is, is a really good idea. And I think, yeah, having, I think the the problem is we want to make sure that it doesn't get like too bloated, but the idea of being able to have multiple tick boxes, I think if we can if we can come up with like an elegant way of, of including that i think that's a really good idea as well yeah the approval process for me would be huge um and the the capability of being um part of a collaboration with pro tools and the online um online gosh why can't i remember does anybody remember what it's called because i'm drawing a blank on it but you know basically being able to uh share your session with someone else and they can do changes um that'll be huge. <laughs> I think Lou, you're right. It's called collaboration. It so, is called collaboration. Okay. So no, on, on the collaboration, uh, do you get uh, automatically your name assigned to your comment? That was that's my question for Freddie here. Does uh, when when somebody makes a comment, and I'm sorry if I missed this earlier, but does uh, somebody's like whoever is asking for the change, does their name? Uh, or contact automatically get assigned to the contact uh, to the comment rather. So as it stands, no. Um, for what it's worth, I have asked our programmers to to add that in, and their response was, "Well, you can just write your name at the start of the comment." So I, I've got, I've got some. I think I need to persuade um, the dev guys that that is a useful feature because yeah, their their response was just well, you can just you can you know if you're when you're writing the comment, you could just say a like direct, I could write a direct Freddie. Yeah, if, you a, know, Freddie, your your argue your argument to them, Freddie. Sorry to jump in, but the uh, your argument to them is going to be a director or a producer is never going to do that. They're going if they're yep. looking. In my business, if I'm looking at this as a uh, even as a short film or, a, uh, you know, somebody can look at a, a film mix that's an hour and a half long and write their comments in, they are not going to write their name in every time. And there, there are composers in Los Angeles who have built this for themselves uh, so that they can have on, on a TV show, you can have six producers. And, and the way they got around this was they have each producer signs in and it automatically shows who it is that's making the comment, whether or not they've listened to the piece of music, whether or not they, uh, they approve the piece of music or if they have changes in what the edits are. And, mm -hmm. and that, auto, uh, but it automatically gets assigned to them. So they 
they they don't have to in their busy lives be uh, bothered with typing their name over and over again times eighty comments on something. Yes, no, I mean, like I I I absolutely agree with you. So I think it's it's going to be something that I need to persuade our programmers would be useful. But um, no, I absolutely agree. Beautiful. And uh, so I'll yeah I'll 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 work on it. But thank you thank Beautiful. you for uh, for backing me up as well on that, Michael. Oh yeah, absolutely, Freddie. It, it it is necessary. But this is this is great. What a great way to even if like in my case, I, I want to make notes to myself about you know, I got too tired to finish tuning the audio uh, or the vocal at this point. I can make uh, a note in here. Absolutely, yeah. It's you know even even not for collaboration. If you um, you know if if you just want to. Um, make notes for yourself. That's absolutely fine. I know um, my my girlfriend, for example, when I was showing her this plugin, she she was I didn't know this previously, but she was saying, "Oh yeah, at the moment when I want to make notes for myself, I ex I like bounce out my project and create like a private SoundCloud link, and then I make comments for myself on there." This is what she was what she was saying to me, and she was like, "Oh, like this is such a." A more straightforward way of doing that. So it's yeah, it's definitely you know useful for um, making making comments for yourself as well. Beautiful point points to the girlfriend is always good. There you go. There Thank we go. You. Can it be uh, bars and beats and the other ways that you can do in Pro Tools like besides hours, minutes, and seconds of frames? Yes. Uh, so I think annoyingly. I've realized I think the version that I've got on my screen may be the beta version. So at the moment it can be set to frames and milliseconds, but I believe in the actual commercially released version, it does have BPM as well. But uh, if not, then it needs to be added in, but I'm 99% sure it is in there. I think I've ended up running the, the wrong version on here. So I'm sorry about that. And what about if you, if you're a guy like me that mixes in the box and mixes the mix right in the session, there's mm -hmm. a certain degree of latency. If I send that out, it's going to be 30 to 40 milliseconds later. It's just that little bit, not that worthy of note for making comments and notes uh, as far as precision. I don't think the notes um, exactly have to be that perfectly in sync, Jimmy. I mean, it's just kind no, of like... I'm just asking. I'm just, I thought that's, I, I agreed with you. No. I think, yeah, you, you probably would. Um, that, yeah, I, 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 I feel like it, it wouldn't be able to compensate necessarily for that amount of latency, but as Barry says, I, I can't think of a situation where that would be relevant, no. but, um, but no, I mean, it's still a valid question, but yeah, I, I, I think it wouldn't be able to compensate for that unless you literally did put like in this time code offset, if you put like 30 milliseconds in there, then yeah. you know, you. You could make it work that way, but I'm not sure how useful that would be. I just wondered, that's all. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, like I say, totally, totally reasonable question. Cool. Um, Thank you, man. Anything else? It's a great product, Freddie. Oh, Thanks, uh, Tony. That's very uh, kind of you. One of those links I put in the chat, I think there's a, you, you have a uh, intro pricing or trial uh, situation? So I believe, so it's going to be $49, but I think at the moment it's $29. Um, I'm pretty sure I, I lose track of these things. Let me just have a, have a look. But yeah, I'm pretty sure. If not, then um, we might even be able to do uh, like a specific discount for people who've attended Tech Tech Breakfast. What's the earliest version of Pro Tools that it works with? Uh, good question. I, to my knowledge, it should go back to Pro Tools 10, or at least that'll be the earliest we've tested it in. There's no specific reason why it wouldn't work in an earlier version of that, but um, we won't have tested it in anything earlier. As far as I'm aware, our like testing guys the earliest version they go back to is is Pro Tools 10. I'm a 10 guy, so thank you. Cool. Yeah, if you if you have any problems, feel free to send me an email as well, and we can have a look into it. My email's freddy 
at nugenaudio.com. So it's very, very easy to remember. Fantastic. Re repeat that, Freddie. Sorry, uh, my email is Freddie, so it's F R E D D Y at newgen, so N U G E N audio, A U D I O dot com. I'll put that in the chat, guys. Hang on. In fact, I, I, I can do that. I don't know why. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Um, hey, Barry, is it inappropriate uh, of me to ask why our friend would uh, stick with Pro Tools 10? Uh, it, is it because of the, the, the 192s or the sync issues or was, is, what was, was there? Say the question again. You, you kind of phased whether, out. Whether, whether our, yeah, yeah. I have that problem in my life. Uh, I phase out. The, uh, um, our, our friend who was just talking about uh, using Pro Tools 10, why would we remain in Pro Tools 10 instead of uh, going beyond it? Was it, was it be a hardware issue or I think I had to replace my sync IOs with the uh, with 11 and on but I thought I noticed a, a, a considerable audio difference in 11 and beyond. So I was just wondering why we would uh, why he was sticking with 10. Well, J <laughs> Jimmy can answer that, but I, I imagine it's my computers old and I got a massive amount of plugins that I didn't want to upgrade to. There you oh, go. okay. All right. There, there you go. Thank you. That answers it very clearly. Thank you. I mean, I'm I'm at last year's Pro Tools because I'm waiting for the new computers to come out, and I'm probably going to be very very sorry that I am because the update is crazy. The plugins, half of them don't work in the, with the Apple chip and all that stuff. So I'm not looking forward to those times. But I've got to. That is maybe something worth mentioning as well. Actually, is that we. Uh, in the process of bringing all our plugins up to um, be compatible with the with the new Apple chips, I, I noticed it's that yeah, pretty I noticed much that. everything. I think maybe it's missing like two or three of our plugins, but we're yeah, that's been a long time coming. But we've uh, yeah, that's that that I think other than SEQS, AMB, and maybe one other, they're they're all um, compatible with the with the silicon chips now. That's great. Good plan. I have all your, as you know, Freddie, I have all the new gen audio stuff. It's very, very advanced, very good stuff. And I'm, I'm looking forward to using it on a worthwhile computer system instead of this old tank. I got. <laughs> You're very kind. That reminds me, actually, have I sent you Jota? I know I was supposed to. I have it. Now, I have it I'm running. Sure I have. I've had. I have it running. I'm unsure whether it's a uh, trial or NFR. I've, it, I've been downloading and installing a lot of stuff since the NAM show. It's like every day, and uh, I'm not sure. Cool. That's that's fine. I can check on that tomorrow. I just I just thought you might know. Thanks so much. Ahead. Very cool, Freddie. Anybody else got any questions for the man? Okay, great. Well, no. Thank you so much, Freddie. It, it was it's amazing. And I, I think, as you know, I mean, I had a lot of people who were asking questions about it. And they were like, they can't make it this morning, but definitely we'll be posting um, the video so they can kind of get a, a overview of everything that's going on. So I think a lot of people are very excited about it. Thank you so much. Great. Yeah, no problem at all. Um, yeah, thanks for 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 listening and um, especially on such short notice i know we called you kind of like barry showed it to me like dude can we get him on for tech breakfast <laughs> it's like <laughs> you responded so very quick i'm like this is something a lot of people need to see know about so thank you so much great yeah i mean you know it's my pleasure that the the rest of this evening i'm supposed to be lugging some like base speaker cabinets across the city so i'm kind of the longer i can put that off you know <laughs> the, the, the better so are you yeah, in the uk uh, you're in the uk yeah in in leeds uh, i was over there last year and i got to come back i think in july of this year so nice yeah um if you make it to leeds then then give me it's, a shout yeah it's beautiful i mean I, I i was telling these guys i would i would go over there and spend a couple of years just it's just so much fun mm. of course i'm sure it's much more expensive than i wanted to pay but you know you know LA is expensive and then you go start going to other cities you're like oh my god how much 
to live in a place is different than just staying there and kind of being on somebody else's dime for a week or two, you know? Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. But it's, um, it's, it's a beautiful city. I love it. Beautiful country. But thank yeah, you, Freddie. Well, Anybody else? No, no one else has any more questions, right? Double checking. Cool. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you. It was very helpful. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. No problem at all. Thanks a lot, guys. Great Have product. a good day. Cheers. Thanks, Freddie. Thanks, Freddie. Uh, so, did what, were we going to jump into? Everybody sent me a whole bunch of different things from last week. Uh, for those of you who made the tech breakfast last week, there were a whole bunch of people who asked questions about all kinds of things, um, including um, AI stuff. Yeah. And. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is Barry's least favorite thing to talk about. But uh, but there were so many questions before, during, and after tech breakfast. Well, what was it? What was the second most popular? <laughs> <laughs> but it's just interesting. I, I was telling Barry before this all started that every week it seems that AI is taking another leap towards something. Um, and I just had a client today who sent me a graphic of that he had paid for. Um, and I was just like, he said, what do you think? And I'm like, it's, it's not good. I said, you would do better just to go in and have AI generate something. And so like all morning long, I've been walking him through the process of what he needs to do. And he, while I was on the phone here, he sent me a, one of the graphics. He said, this is better than what I just paid 1500 bucks for. Jeez, that's like, scary. That's scary. Yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't want to be his, well, never mind. But do you see what I'm saying? It's just like he was, he's been after somebody else and he typed in a very descriptive line into the AI. And he said it took him about 35, 40 minutes for them to come back. And, uh, you know, he had, he had worked with a graphic artist for weeks trying to come up with a, a piece of art that would, you know, show exactly what he was talking about. And it wasn't even close to compared to what AI generated in 35 minutes. Well, he liked he liked what AI did. Let's let's be let's be truthful about it. He liked what the AI the guy he hired, whoever he hired was shitty, that's all. No, I don't think it's just that. I think the amount of description that he could add in was was so detailed that I think it became overwhelming to a graphic artist. Whereas AI took it and was like, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, and here we go. Well, yeah. you hire a graphic artist to sell you know, that's what the art is supposed to do, I assume. Yeah. yeah. But he's hired at least two or three, and not one of them has nailed it. Not one. They've, they've been very close, and he sends it to me every time he comes up with something. He's like, what do you think of this? I'm like, dude, it's just missing something. This is, you know, this is, it's okay. Well, I don't know if I would, I don't know. I think you're jumping to the conclusion that AI was better than a bunch of, you know, third-rate graphic artists. Maybe it is. Yeah, it, there's, I, I'm just saying it's getting there. And I know you don't like AI and I know it's not something you really want to do. This idea that it's getting there, you know, this is not, not in my universe. Well, it's, it's definitely making inroads, dude. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's making inroads faster than we all think. And every week there's another leap. In when terms you have of Google, when you have companies like Google behind it in Microsoft, those, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of brain power. So, and they're going to make it right. It's just a matter not, of time. Well, do you, have, do you not find the like being able to take something that's thirty or forty years old and separate out the bass from the drums and the vocals and uh, be able to uh, you know recompress, remix, rebalance, and export? Do you not find that uh, a useful approach, Barry? If you don't have the master tape. Now you're talking about something different. We were talking about a creative, a creative process. You're oh, talking I, about I, I view that as a, as a, as a creative process, but you, you, so. You're talking about a technical process. I get that. AI is great for that. Watching a thousand uh, video cameras, see if there's a, a weapon in one of those cameras. That's a perfect use for it. I just object to this idea that somehow the AI is going to be better creatively than somebody that's really good at their art. That's like ha telling me, okay, I got an AI that will do a better mix than yours. Well, wait a minute. Who's to say that? Yeah, that's, it's got to be subjective. 
So, That's definitely subjective. And I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm definitely not saying that AI is going to do a better mix than Barry Rudolph or anybody else. But what I'm saying is that what it's bringing to the table is doing so in leaps and bounds faster than anyone thought. And because it's of, that's because of all the power and the money and the brain power that's behind it all. Google and Microsoft and God knows who else. I mean, they really want this to happen. So uh, that's another reason to kind of be a little suspect of the whole thing. But I think um, um, you guys, when you say you're having input from a person that's putting in a thousand different parameters to come out with an output of something, that's a whole totally different thing. And that could be useful for that person that wants to put in a thousand different suggestions to something. I personally don't want to have somebody sitting over me or even emailing me with a thousand different suggestions on how to do something. I'd rather, you know, pass on that job. So that could be good for that type of scenario. Yeah, for this in particular, this guy needed a graphic done and he was very, I mean, he's, he's a writer, so he's very descriptive about everything he wanted and why he wanted it that way. And they, a lot of the graphic artists were really good. They're, they caught some of it, but it was almost impossible to do everything. But with the AI, he could go back and forth and say, you know what, this is cool, but I need another, I need another layer of this. I need another layer of that. And he could continue to build on it. And it was I think that yeah. that actually is good for, again, like I've worked on projects where you've got, uh, you know, 10 different people making decisions on something. That's, you know, once again, that's great for that to have AI join that is great because a lot of times when you have those situations, you have 10 different people, none of which really know what they want. They're just fishing, <laughs> right? And sure. so it's a waste of time for you to have to decipher what it is they really want and and come up with something that's that's painful for me anyway yeah i think it is for most people you know but it's it's interesting to see how like i said it's not for everybody and it's not bulletproof and you know there's definitely a human element that definitely is going to make it uh i don't know warmer or better or whatever but Every week, I keep seeing images that I'm like, oh, that's a really cool image. I never would have thought of that. That's a really cool thing. I never would have thought of that. Some of the other stuff that is just laughable to me. I think it's funny to have a music genre that has so been inundated and now can be duplicated by a computer that they 86 themselves out of a job. It's like if, if you're Drake and the, and, and the Weeknd and somebody just created an AI song that that is moving up the charts and number three on, you know, iTunes, that's just funny to me. I mean, damn sure they're not laughing, but uh, it's just funny to me. Hey, Tony. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if anybody was at the tech experience at NAMM, but, you know, uh, Chuck D was there and, you know, he was the, you know, kind of leading the thing. And one of the things that he said about it was just interesting to me. He's like, look, he says, you have to look back at, you know, everything everybody discounted, you know, from where, all the way back when they started hip hop and it was like, oh, that's not going to do anything. No one's listening to that. He said, you know, he said what he said about AI was, look, he said, just kind of what you guys say, it's not there yet, but it's coming like a freight train. And he says, if you ignore it, it's going to leave you behind really fast. And that, that kind of stuck with me. He's like, you're right. It's not there yet. We're not using it yet, but don't ignore it. You know, <laughs> pay attention to it, make sure what it's doing and be there now, because if you ignore it, it'll pass you by. I thought that was pretty smart of him. Yeah. And especially guys who are in our industry, I think any creative industry has to look over their shoulder and just say, what's coming next? Just so I know what's going on, because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get caught with my pants down. And be like, you know, I could have done X, Y, and Z. I think there are certain creative things that it can do for me right now that most other people can't do. You know, you could pull vocals out and, and do some amazing things. And I think, you know, it's going to be in the future. It's going to be, you know, the people who own the, the product, the le record labels being able to say, hey, you know, we've got uh, Nat King Cole and, and all these other people. We can license their vocals to you. And they're already set and ready to go. I saw a TikTok this week where the guy was just, they took a, a stream 
maybe you guys have seen this, they took a stream of somebody and they took their vocals and they created a ransom note from somebody saying, this woman was just like, you know, my daughter's been held ransom. And it was someone who had done, had taken her vocal and put into AI and said, please help me. I need you to send me the money that being held ransom. Blah, blah, blah. They finally caught the guys who did it, but I mean, it's like the wild, wild west of audio. But yeah, maybe I'm wrong. And I'm willing to be wrong about it. Uh, I don't think you're wrong, Tony. I don't think you're wrong. I think we have to be aware. Yeah, you're very, you're very wise in that. We, we, we'll keep our eye on it and, uh, for what it's worth, guys, uh, SCL is working very closely with Congress and Senate to try to get a handle on this. For us creative people, still, according to the Constitution of the United States, our work cannot be generated and copyrighted uh, uh, by a computer. It cannot be. We, uh, a copyright has to be registered to a person. It has to be created by a person. So we... we um, we're protected as long as our uh, Congress people and senators are aware of this. They don't change the law for the big three publishing companies to be able to go, oh, no, no, we, we own all this. We can make uh, an algorithm based on the stuff we already own, and then we'll just generate it and we'll publish it ourselves. And then we don't have to pay any composers uh, or, or creators, because yeah, I know that not everybody hears it. A composer but as a creator you still get you still have ownership there through neighboring rights through all that you should you should be collecting on your work on streaming and everything else it's it's have you talked to richard gibbs lately yeah i talked to i was at his place yesterday what, what about it yeah well two weeks ago i was telling this to everybody at tech breakfast last week two weeks ago richard had uh you know at his composer's breakfast at malibu and went out there and he was saying that he feels that where he'd like to see it go is people being able to copyright their styles. So that if someone says, I want a style as if it was, I, wanna, I want the score done in a John Williams style, he thinks that composers will be able to do that in, in, in due time and be able to say, well, that's a style. And then you can give that style to AI and you can get paid for that style of music. Well, okay, so so now that's already part of the copyright law, that that if you uh, so so th this came about uh, when people were doing uh, temp tracks and they would ask the composer to copy the temp track, right? During there is part of the copyright law that says if your work is based on another work, it is the original compositions you know that it was based on it is that composer's copyright it is not the new guy who made it oh i'm doing it in the style of i i i, I don't mean anything against ed sure but a very nice man and i think that's bullshit that you can't play one three four uh chord change but but you know that that it's based on the original composer that you obviously copied it's uh, and and I don't think Ed did that, but but you. I don't think he did either. No, but but here we are. That the copyright law already includes that. But does your standard co congressman or your standard senate senator actually care or get that? No, their 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 full job is to be reelected, and they have a young person who's the legal representative and a young guy who's the social representative, and all those people that are working in their office, and we have to get to all those people to make sure that the senator doesn't go, oh no, let's embrace AI and overwrite the copyright law, uh, the Constitution of the United States to include this language. And uh, it, it's, it's already there, we just need to enforce it. And, and I, sure may be, I may be out here on a limb by myself, but I just think what, what the gay uh, family is doing is just wrong. I just I'm, think that I'm they're wrong. You. That's two times in a row. That's copyright, two times in a row. You're gonna copyright a cow, cowbell pattern? Come on. That's just wrong. And they were yeah. wrong. They were wrong for going after Pharrell and they're wrong yeah. for going after Ed Sheeran. And somebody yeah. just needs to, you know. It's like Trey Sona, you know, those, those people. You just have to go, okay, 
uh, somebody found a, a means and an attorney who's mean enough to try to go, okay, let's shake down high schools for $20,000 on a weekend when they can't afford it and, and get them to, to stop eight weeks worth. Of the, I don't know if you guys know about this, but Trey Stone has been doing that. There's a part of the copyright. Uh, when, when you own a copyright, say on a, uh, say you're doing hairspray at your high school, there's a, uh, if you do uh, printed music and you play from printed music, it means they have the right to come in and charge you. And, and Trey Sona has been coming to all these individual schools like Burbank High School and coming after them and going, okay, you're, you're, you have a three-day performance. You've got to give us $20,000. And, and of course they go, $20,000? $20, $20, we don't spend twenty thousand dollars on the entire event or make that much money, and so they have to a week before the performance cancel the performance and disappoint all the kids. And uh, so, yeah, there are there are mean people out there that are taking advantage of these little nuggets I involved in the law, and we're working hard. Um, and again, I'm not trying to promote the SCL, but whoever wants to look at that, the SCL is working hard to try to uh, circumvent some of those problems because that's not right. I would, um, I would like to say one thing. I'm sorry for Tony and Barry. This is a repeat performance. I think um, it is very important in your mind to maybe not use the word AI. And the reason for that is that it is not artificial intelligence. There is no intelligence there. It is machine learning. It's a lot of deep data that gets recollaged again. And the difference by thinking about like this is that we are taking away some of this fake credit that is attributed to it, like creativity or like how magical it is. And we call it what it is. It is a very well done collage of existing data. And um, my wife runs a legal department at Universal. Nobody there talks about AI. Nobody cares because they know this is not going to be a thing for them. Because if anybody starts to reassemble anything Universal, they're going to be sued out of their ass. And um, so I think that outside of audio, there is a, an issue where I, I, I'm later having coffee with a friend who told me on the same day that she had AI read a contract and then help her design a website, which is theoretically interesting, like kind of, yeah, kind of useful, but it also means that there is a lawyer that has not been paid by Google and that there's a graphic designer that has not been paid by Microsoft looking at this that understands the world. And so I just think like use any tool you have, but if you call it machine learning, it is it is what it is. If you want to check your mix by a machine that has Check the thousand mix is great. That's fine. It's not an artificial intelligent mixer you're talking to. You're talking to a database. And I think that's important to know. And your friends at Google and Microsoft don't want you to realize that this is not magic. Yeah. Maybe they want maybe they want you to be kind of leery and afraid because they think that will somehow give them the ability or the freedom to do things that seem that aren't really too good that like you're afraid right you're afraid because you don't know it you don't know how it works you don't know what it is uh oh i'm afraid but you're right of course and that's why i'm not really that concerned about it i mean i no one's going to do a better mix than i can and nobody can do a worse one than me <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I, I can't fault any of that. I can't fault those theories at all. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you know, we'll see what happens, guys. I, I, I don't know. I mean, you're right. It's machine learning and not AI. But I, I sense that all of it is going down a pipeline. And it's a, whether you call it machine learning or, or AI, Lars, it is moving so rapidly that people are because I think the more people who get involved are saying, hey, this is something we've got to learn how to do. And we've got to make something happen, we've got, you know? So I don't know. I just, I bring it up there so that no one is in our circle of friends is caught with their pants down. Like, man, I wish I got in on that and learned something earlier about it. So that when, you know, something comes up, um, you know, it, it's a, it, I, I hear, and we were having this conversation, I think at Tech Breakfast, 
uh, AI is supposed to give make more millionaires in the next 10 years than any other industry has up until this point in the last 50 years. The, so who knows? Who knows if that's true? Um, I, I haven't met those people. Then I, 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 I second what you're saying, Tony. I think that if you look back at the last revolution, you know, you, you look at the automation of drum machines and syncing two tape machines and all that stuff and Symphony and what that, what the people who didn't get on that bandwagon and then you look at midi and the people that fell away because they did not embrace midi you know or going to digital recording uh those people generally very few of them uh have uh you know the 2000 recording studios that were tape tape machine based recording studios in los angeles there's maybe three of them left right and and you if, if we if we do, aren't aware and we don't embrace it we run the risk of uh, being the 1997 that fall away. Yeah, that's, a, that's my point exactly, Mike. That's, a, that's my point exactly. So anyone else have anything else? I, I thank you all for coming. Um, anything new, any news? I know that- uh, I have something new. Yes. Yeah, something, something new. Synthplex is gonna happen again at the end of, the, it's gonna be the, uh, fourth weekend in 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 uh march of next year so we're gonna take a chance on the weather march was so nasty and wet and we need it again i hope i hope we get our outside stuff rained out because we'll do it all inside we're we're planning on uh lowering the quantity and upping the quality and we've already got a lot of speakers that are same, going to do same that. location michael uh, over it, there right now that that's where we've got i haven't quite signed the contract yet but we have we are yes we Tell everybody we, what that place is called it's by the burbank airport it's the marriott convention center the mary it's called the burbank marriott convention center right by it's right by center staging and amatron and pacific radio and all those places yeah. uh and uh and the Burbank Airport. But that's not what I was, what I'm most happy with is a year ago, I told you guys that by last June, I was going to get my Atmos room built. And yesterday I hung the last pole. I've got all the cables in. I got a 15.4.8 system. Uh, we, we have, uh, we just put the last pole up. Uh, today we're supposed to put up the last four of the 20 surround speakers. We are, uh, we are, are making great progress and even though i'm a year behind i did go into synthplex in last june and then after synthplex i did the lifetime achievement awards and then i did the scl awards after that and and finally about four weeks ago i went i'm not doing anything new until i finish what i've already started and you guys are going to be able i hope to have you guys all come over and experiencing it sometime uh, uh mid to late summer please we'd love a tour oh please wait, please wait, wait. I, I, oh go ahead Good question. You went with the, your configuration of 20.1.4, you said? Is that? 20.4.8. Okay, so four subwoofers, eight overhead. What is that entail? Uh, you, you, you're labeling it as Dolby Atmos, right? Because I'm 11.1 being, but I have three subs in my room, okay? And it's four overheads because I tested the four, tested the six, and I just went with the four. Um, but what, what, what drove you to that many speakers? Uh, Dolby, Dolby required it. Dolby okay, required so for a theatric. I'm not a. I, I'm not a, a music house or a, uh, a television house. We are theatrical in what we want to do. So uh, they required that I have twelve on the shoulder plane. Right. right? Minor, minor up more like you'd see in a regular movie theater. The surround right, speakers right. always eight, nine right. feet off the ground and pointed at you. And, gotcha. and then I have, so that's 12, four on each side and four across the back and then eight on the ceiling. Gotcha. And okay. the, the, all, all of them, the surround, those surround speakers, those uh, 20 surround speakers, they have an 18 inch sub on the left side and an 18 inch sub on the right side to handle the low frequency. And then we added two new 18 inch subs up front so there's four 18s up, uh, four 18 inch woofers up front. Okay. And, uh, nice. and yeah, it's, 
it's it's kind of complex and and being able to actually watch a dvd and the or a blu-ray and decode it you know it's uh it's uh really been an interesting process because uh dolby but dolby you know uh, has been just fantastic uh with helping me i was going to go if you have four speakers on the side i was going to go 50 percent in the first two for the the wide uh, on on the blu-ray playback if you're checking like a blu-ray that you've made so you'd have uh 50 of the first two speakers and in the second and third speaker you'd have another 50 percent. and dolby says no 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 first two then become the wides and then the third one becomes your surround and the uh fourth speaker becomes your uh your rear surround um or your back surround and then your rear surrounds become just stereo like when i had two speakers but they dolby would not let me have i wanted to keep with six surround speakers and just add four or eight on the ceiling they said no not if you're theatrical you have to have more so yeah you must have a large room because to be theatrical are you running the cinema um dolby unit itself or are you running it through the render we we will be running both we we are uh we have uh wired and implemented the maddie we're all maddie once you go in aes you stay aes you never go to dante you never have anything that in, inserts a delay you just say aes and kurt kurt uh, howell has been just yeah. a great help here uh uh which i met at the, i met kurt at this meeting and uh so we are we we are implementing the internal unit uh, i'm not even that far i mean i'm telling you i just got the pole up we got all the the wires run we have all the connectors <laughs> on the wires but we still have from the amplifiers to the uh uh the, all the 192s not the 192s i have hds i did did not go with the with the matrixes i went with the the hds I have so many of them and then uh from the the output of the hds to the amplifiers the amplifiers to the patch point on the back those are still being wired with the special ken goris wiring uh and and then after that's done then i can start worrying about the software and stuff but it's our plans we were just at the fab factory last week and fab factory is using they use two playback machines a recorder and a dar machine they have four computers running in sync and uh we were only planning on running two and then the third one for the dar but right. you know we'll we'll see and now that the m2 is coming out in a in a pro it's it's going to kind of blow the computer i just bought last year out of the water and we have to consider that yeah, anybody, anybody, excited? anybody tip the hand about when that new mac is coming out i get do you know anybody said anything michael i thought i thought i read that it was going to be out in late 23 so late they usually time it to some fall. kind of event that apple in the fall in the fall because yeah, it'd, be in the fall. it'd be in the fall when they do their usual anything enough. after the fall they would uh i mean you know use the iphones and everything else they're going to drop all that stuff in the fall so everybody can skate all the way through you know, into the year so my yeah, guess and buy it for christmas good to exactly. know that's what, that's what i got that's what i'm saving my ducats for that and a new car about the same price <laughs> Same price, though. <laughs> My God. Anyway, um, awesome. Good. Okay. Well, we're coming over, Michael. We're going to check your shit out. Yeah. Let us know when you when you you know you you can have visitors. We'd love to come by and check it out. Oh, do a, I, I'd love a, to a have you. I can't, I can't yeah. wait. It's one of my goals is to have our group, this tech breakfast group, come over and see it. That'd be awesome, man. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Have a great week. We'll see you next month. All right? Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.